Hey developers, so today I'm going to do something a little different. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I am a big Vue.js fan and I've done tons of videos on Vue.js, Nuxt, and all that. But today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to look at Next.js. I'm going to compare it and contrast it with Nuxt.js. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all about it. And of course, if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric. I'm a big fan of JavaScript. I'm a big fan of React and Vue.js, especially Vue.js all the different frameworks. So if you like those that type of content, make sure you click that subscribe button and click that bell button if you like. So let's go ahead and just get started. All right, so I am here on the Next.js site. I know just enough of Next.js to get started. I don't know a lot of it. Uh, like I said, I am a really big Nux.js fan, but if you don't know what either one of those things are, so Next.js is the React framework for production. I think of it as a way to do uh, st static site generation and server-side rendering in all in one really neat package. You could probably compare this to uh, to Nuxt on the view side. So Nuxt is really the same thing. They call it the intuitive view framework. So you build your own Vue.js application with confidence, but it has the same sort of things. It's really great for static site generation and also server-side rendering. So it makes it just, you can make really fast sites out of it. Now Nuxt.js definitely has a lot of different uh, from what I know, Nuxt.js has a, a lot of different things than Next.js, so I'm not going to go through every little thing. I'm just going to do a real beginner start or setup of Next.js and then kind of take a look at it. So I have already, see, you can see here, uh, this is my, this is my v VS Code, and I have my terminal open here. I went ahead and created a Nuxt app, so just so we can do a little bit of comparison. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with Next, and I'm gonna follow the guidelines here. I can click Start, Start Now. Now it does mention I should use this command, this npx create app, next, uh, create next app, and use npm. So I'm gonna use npm in this example. I'm not gonna copy this whole thing, so I don't really want to use the starter, but I'm gonna just create, I don't know, dash dash, use npm. I'm gonna close this configure terminal. And I'm going to change the name of this because it's not going to be really a blog. I'm just call example. And this will just take a moment and it should install a fresh new Next app for me to poke around and take a look at. Great. So I went ahead and finished for me. So I can just follow the instructions here. I'm going to go to the example folder and run npm run dev. And while it's doing that, I'm going to take a look at this Next.js example folder. So I'm going to poke around here. So Let's see, you can see here we have this pages folder. We have a public where we can probably put our assets in. We have a styles folder. We have a git ignore. So uh, let's take a look. It's it's already running. So I'm going to open up localhost uh, 3000. Sorry for the clicky keyboard. And yeah, here it is out of the box. And yeah, it looks fine to me. So first, right away when I'm looking at this and I'm kind of thinking of how it compares to Nuxt. If you look at it, we only have this pages and public folder, but in the Nuxt app, we have so many, and we have an API, I guess in their pages, you have an API, but in the Nuxt layout, it's a lot different. So let me close this. You can see here, we have the assets, we have components, we can have layouts, we, can have, we have this middleware, we have pages and plugins and static and store. So right away, you can see that this is a lot bigger. And this is, by the way, this is just an out of the box Nuxt app, um, typing in npx create nuxt app instead of create next app. So you get a lot more full, mar, lot more folders right away. Uh, one thing also I noticed is this pages folder is pretty much the same as the pages folder here. So to create routes, you can easily just add in folders in here. So if I wanted to create, I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna create a notes uh, route and I'm gonna create a new file and then call it index.js and you can see here, you just did this export default default function. I think I could do the same thing here. And then I guess I can return, and I'm gonna see if I can just return a hello world. And I'm gonna save it. And I think it compiled successfully. So if I go here, let's see if I can change this route, which I call notes. Cool, so there's the hello world. So like as it's really, really simple to add routes um, as I expected. And I know you can do dynamic routes. So if I click, if I do new file here and do something called ID and do uh, ID.js, 
and then I can create my own export default um, let's call it ID function ID and then we can return something from here which I don't know h2 hi from and then I'll put in an ID and then to get that ID I can just import in use router which is a type of hook in react from next slash router and then I should be able to grab the data out of it some called router equals use router and then I'll do a little destructuring to grab the ID and then this use route this router has a query which is a kind of a query param that you can pass into it so if I do this and I save it and I did it right this note still works but if I go to one two three it's cool so now I see, I see high from one two three so I've been able to create a route real quick easily I've been able to create some par query params um, really really simply in here now compared it to Nuxt it's actually not that much different uh, in the Nuxt world so this is actually React app but if I go into my Nuxt app you do have the pages and you would kind of create it the same way but instead of I can create a, a new folder here called notes and then inside this new folder I would create a, a new file with an underscore not the brackets and called id.view and then I would uh, create my my app here and then I do have a dollar sign router that I would have access to to grab the information out of so it's very similar um, we don't use hooks. Well, we don't necessarily have the, the same hooks inside Vue that we have in React, but it would be a very si similar thing to get this up and running. I'm not going to do it, but this is how it, it would work. Okay, and so another thing we might uh, see a little bit of uh, differences and, and something that's kind of similar to both Nuxt and Next is there's this API folder and it has this hello file. So it has like this uh, really simple API that you can build into uh, into next which would actually be ran on the server side and you can then use it as like a really nice uh, server framework inside your your next app so it actually has an example of here of doing hello so if I go to slash API slash slash hello I get you can see here hello uh, John Doe because this is actually connecting to the server and then spitting out this JSON now on the Nux side, you can actually do something very similar if you wanted to add in like custom endpoints. To do that, you would actually click a uh, new folder. You can do an API or call it whatever you want. And I can create a new file here and I'll call it, uh, let's say um, api.js. And then I would just paste in um, a function. I can even use express if I wanted to. So here's a really simple one where I'm just setting the content type and I'm sending the end. So it's just a just like you're using any sort of node backend, uh, you can create your own um, backend information, you can create your own endpoints. And then inside my Nux config here, I would add in, I'm just gonna copy the paste this from another screen. You would add in the server middleware and you just define what you wanted. So this could be your custom server middleware so you can create multiple endpoints. Now I don't know about uh, next but on Nuxt this is recommended for like if you wanted to some simple server uh, functions or endpoints this is a great way to do it if you're gonna have a, a very complicated app with multiple endpoints and you're doing a lot of things I would probably still create my own end my still my own server to do all that I probably wouldn't put it all inside the Nuxt app but if I had something very simple or is connecting to another API I think this is a great way to do it so this would do it the exact same way and then if you go to slash API in the path, you would actually get into this endpoint. Now, one uh, another couple of things I, I noticed between Next and as being a Nux developer is that we have this components folder, which they already have like this sample components folder. And it sounds like in the Next.js ecosystem, you can just create your own source folder if you wanted to, and then create a components folder under that, and then just put your components in there, and then you can import them in inside your pages or if you wanted to you can move the pages into the source folder I believe it works exactly the same uh, so those are just a few things that I noticed uh, obviously we're using JSX and React so that's going to be completely different than Vue so I've, some Vue still uses the Vue directives and that's what you use in the Nux case there is one other thing too uh, with this API is interesting there is something in the 
in the next side, which is allows you to access data. It's called data fetching. You can do it with, looks like there's a couple different ways to do it. Get server side props. So there's a ways of like grabbing information from the server. And on the next side, there is something similar. Uh, so they have this async data, um, which is a middleware that you can add inside your view functions. And that's a way to grab the context and grab data or information um, that, that way. It's kind of similar to the uh, fetching data through the get server side props, I believe, between the two. So um, in, so essentially, basically in, in 2.12 and later, they recommend use the fetch hook, uh, which, is, which you use most of the time. So uh, that's a quick overview between the two. I mean, just as a view developer jumping into Next, I really am impressed with it. It looks great. I like how it has this API folder all ready to go. Um, I don't see a whole lot of advantages over Next over Nuxt right now, just from playing around with it for a little bit. They seem very, very similar. They both have the same kind of ideas. I think there's probably a, maybe a little bit of a bigger ecosystem on the next side than the next side. But I want to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. Take care.